This is my IBM 5150 running in a dual monitor setup. I've always liked the idea of the computer being able to use two graphic cards at the same time. Now the IBM PC, the 5150, originally came with an MDA or monochrome display adapter. Now this is a card that you usually hook up to a monochrome monitor like the IBM 5151. Now, as an option, IBM also offered a color graphics adapter or CGA card. Now, this card was able to produce graphics up to four colors at the same time from a 16 color palette. But the cool thing is that these cards use different addresses, so they can be used in the system at the same time. So here we're using the MDA or monochrome display adapter on a 5151 monochrome monitor to display the worksheet. And we're using our CGA or color graphics adapter card to draw some graphs on the 5153 CGA monitor. Now, there aren't many software titles that make use of this feature, but Lotus 123 is definitely one of them. But productivity isn't the only software category that benefits from this dual monitor setup. Integrated development tools like this Borland Turbo Compiler, allowing you to debug your application on one screen and see the output on another, really benefits from a dual monitor setup. But before we go into more detail on that, let's first focus on Lotus 123. Now the reason we want to see text on the monochrome monitor is because the MDA or monochrome display adapter card has a much higher resolution than the CGA card and it can render text beautifully and it's very easy on the eyes. The MDA card also has a big plus going for it and that's the presence of a parallel port on the card, something that was very popular for business. It is however limited to display only simple character graphics as it cannot address individual pixels on the screen. So with a single monochrome text mode, 80 columns by 25 lines of high resolution text characters and symbols, it does its job very well. Now CGA's text quality is mediocre at best. Not only does it have a much lower resolution, 320 by 200 versus the 720 by 350 of MDA, but it's also a lot harder on the eyes, especially when you're using the monitor for a long time. It also didn't come with a printer port, meaning that it wasn't very popular for businesses. If you look closely, you can also see the individual pixels resulting in what is known as pixel bleeding, where each character made up by 8x8 eight eight pixels isn't all that sharp. Something you won't be seeing on the monochrome display adapter, as it doesn't address individual pixels, but rather dumps the complete character at once, producing a very sharp image. But despite its drawbacks in the text department, CGA had one big plus going for it, and that's its ability to display graphics. Something that became very popular at the time, and was used heavily by Lotus123. Now, MS-DOS in and by itself has support for dual screens using the mode command. Using the mode CO80 command, we can switch the display to our CGA5153 monitor and we can execute commands on that. Now, you'll notice that the monochrome display in the meantime has a blinking cursor but doesn't accept any input from MS-DOS. If we want to switch back to the monochrome display, we need to issue the mode command again this time using the mono argument. Control will be given back to the monochrome display where we can execute our commands. In this video I'm going to be using Lotus123 as an example on how a software package can make use of these dual screens. Lotus supports different video modes ranging from monochrome to color to a combination of both. And it does so by installing a set of drivers. So you can select the driver that you want to install using the various batch commands on the utility disks. For example here, I'm activating the monochrome driver. It will copy over some files to the Lotus123 application, and the Lotus123 application will run in that specific mode. So this means that if I launch Lotus123 right now, it will launch solely on my monochrome display. So what this basically means is that I will have a very sharp and crisp monochrome display to load up my worksheets in Lotus123. 
but unfortunately due to the limitations of the monochrome display adapter I won't be able to see any graphs. So let's load up a worksheet I have on my floppy disk right here. I'm going to go into the menu, select File, Retrieve, and select our worksheet. So as you can see, the data is displayed very sharply onto the IBM 5151 monochrome display, but I cannot show up any graphs. So the beep indicates that there is something wrong and it cannot display the graph. Now, in order to draw graphs in Lotus 1, 2, 3, you basically need to activate the CGA support. And this is done by installing the color driver. So on our IBM 5153 CGA monitor, we're going to activate the color batch file, which will install the color drivers for Lotus 1, 2, 3. So it will again copy over some files to the Lotus 123 installation directory. And as you'll see in a bit, we will have full graphics capabilities in Lotus 123 to display these beautiful graphs. So with the color driver installed, launching the Lotus 123 executable will launch the program onto our IBM 5153 monitor, which is attached to our CGA card. So here you can see our workbench screen and I will load up the same file as I did just before when we were in the monochrome mode. So I'll select our file, which will bring up the worksheet right here. And when I enter the menu to show up the graph, you can see that the graph is shown onto the CGA display. So far we've seen two ways of using Lotus 1 through 3. One was on the monochrome display adapter and now we're using it on the color graphics adapter. Now the downside of this kind of setup is that we're always focusing on one particular screen. So here we both have the worksheet and the graphs on our single monitor. But wouldn't it be nice if we were able to load up the worksheet on one monitor and pull up the graphs on another? Well, this is exactly what Lotus 123 is capable of, and that is using the both driver. So the both driver can be installed like the other two drivers using a batch file on the Lotus Utilities disk. And this will enable Lotus to load up the worksheet on the MDA adapter and the graphs on the CGA adapter. So again, it will copy some files over to the Lotus 123 installation directory. And when we start it, we'll see that the driver is activated. So here we're launching Lotus 123 on our IBM 5151 monochrome display adapter and it loads up the worksheet. So I will again select my worksheet file that I will use as an example. And here it comes. And when we execute the menu now to load up the graph menu, what will happen is as soon as we enter the view mode, it will not display the graph on the monochrome display adapter, but it will rather display it on our secondary monitor, which is powered by the CGA adapter. So this gives us a nice combination of both screens within the same application. So as you're making changes to your worksheet and focusing on one monitor, you can watch the updated graphs on the secondary monitor without losing any focus. Now a fourth option, if you don't want to sacrifice the high resolution text but don't really care about color graphics, is this Hercules card. Now Lotus 123 comes with a Hercules driver. And what Hercules basically does is it combines the high resolution MDA text only mode with a graphics mode in a much higher resolution than CGA can offer. The only sacrifice you have to make is the color so it will only display graphics in a single color. Now the Hercules card also included a parallel port, making it very popular for business. 
Now with the version of Lotus 123 that I was using here, I wasn't able to display any kind of graphics using the Hercules card on my 5150. The graphs would come out like this. So I don't know if this was a driver issue or a software issue, so I tried it with a later version of Lotus 123, but quickly came to the sad realization that my 5150 was hugely underpowered for this task. So I had to speed up this footage quite a bit in order to make it workable. And lord and behold, the graphs suddenly started appearing in this nice phosphor green tint. Leaving the productivity category, we're going to be moving on to the integrated development environments. We're going to be using the Borland Turbo Debugger, a machine level debugger for MS-DOS executables that makes excellent use of a dual screen setup. Now you can configure the way that the Borland Turbo compiler handles multiple displays in the installation program. So you can set it up to use the other display for the user program. You can also specify stuff like color, but we'll be using the default for that. Just remember to go into the display menu and select other display in the user screen updating section. Don't forget to save your configuration before exiting this installer application and you should be good to go. So let's kick things off. We'll start our Borland Turbo compiler and we'll be greeted with the welcoming screen here. I'm going to select a demo application which is part of the Turbo Compiler software suite, which is a simple demo that will accept some user input and do some calculations. Now I can run this program and trace it so that it ends up in my debugger, and I can step over the program line by line. And as you can see, the program will execute according to the debugger, it asks for user input here, it continues, and I can step over each line. Again, it waits for user input, so I'm going to enter something, and it will continue the loop. Now the program will continue as soon as I stop uh, inputting text, so I'm just going to hit an enter here, and you'll see the program moving on. So this kind of dual monitor setup is really handy because as a software developer, you get constant access to your development tools while at the same time you see the output of your application. So I can add watches here to my integrated development environment. I can step over the program and I can see the actual output that my program is reproducing on my secondary monitor. Now we're very used to using dual monitor setups today, but I mean, the fact that you could actually do this in, you know, the beginning of the 80s is, is truly mind boggling to me. Whilst the standard IBM PC looks really cool with a monochrome display, adding a second color monitor just brings it to a whole new level. It's a shame there isn't any more software that really makes use of it, but for the software that does make use of it, I see it as a real added value. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions or want to see some specific stuff, please drop a comment below. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.